by Leverkusen are on the verge of making history. Xabi Alonso's side currently sit comfortably at the top of the Bundesliga, and are only a matter of games away from ending Bayern Munich's strangleholds on German football, as has seen them crowned champions of Germany for the past 11 years. Bayer Leverkusen's journey to this moment has been a turbulent one, full of near misses and agony, but the end of their suffering is in sight, and surely, soon, they will finally be German champions. But over 20 years ago, they nearly had it all, but agonisingly fell short when it really mattered. This is a story of Bayer Leverkusen and the horror treble. Bayer Leverkusen were first founded in 1904 as part of a sports club made up of workers from the pharmaceutical company Friedrich Bayer & Co. They started in the lower tiers of German football, ascending to the higher leagues around the time of the birth of the Bundesliga in the early 1960s. They established themselves in the Bundesliga in the 1980s and won their first major honour with the UEFA Cup in 1988, coming back after a 3-0 defeat to Espanyol in the first leg to win the final on penalties. Soon after this, Renier Clamund was promoted to general manager of the club, and this move would help steer them to their greatest era. He would sign high-profile players such as Rudy Voller and Bern Schuster for the club. They won their first DFP Pokal in 1993, but a disastrous season in the 95-96 campaign almost saw them relegated. Clamund would ring the changes. He brought in Christoph Daum as manager, and the next season he almost had immediate glory. Leverkusen had finished second in the 96-97 campaign, thanks largely to the goals of forward Ulf Kirsten. They finished only two points behind winners Bayern Munich, and were keen to climb the table. They finished third the next season, and continued pushing towards honours, and in their quest for glory would bring in a number of Brazilian players such as Lucio, Z. Roberto and Emerson. They had also been joined by young midfielder Michael Balak, along with forwards Oliver Nueville and Dimitar Berbatov. They hoped signings such as these could take them over the line. The 99-2000 season was one of agony, as Leverkusen won top on the final day and only needed a draw against Unterashing to seal the title. However, disaster struck in the 20th minute, when Michael Balak scored an own goal, and Leverkusen lost 2-0. Bayern Munich would pip them to a title on goal difference. To add insult to injury, this was soon followed by a nationwide scandal. In the summer of 2000, Christoph Daum had been tipped to take over the German national team. However, he was rocked when the press alleged he had engaged in cocaine fueled orgies of prostitutes. Daum supplied a hair sample to prove his innocence, but the sample proved he was a user of the drug, something he would end up finally admitting to. He would not be appointed by Germany and was sacked by Leverkusen as a result. He was replaced by Bertie Votes. Votes would guide him to fourth place finish the next season before being replaced by Klaus Topmöller. Whilst Topmöller had achieved little in his career as a manager, hopes were high he could push Leverkusen over the line. The season started well, with two goals from Lucio sealing a 2-1 win over Wolfsburg, and their form continued, with them not losing a game in the league until December. Their venture in the Champions League went well too, with them advancing through the first group stage in second place, and they would finish top in the second group stage, grouped of Arsenal, Juventus and Deportivo La Coruña. They accompanied fought their way through the DFP Pokal as well, and a 3-1 win over Cologne in the semi-final sent them through. Top Moma's side were indeed fighting on three fronts. Balak was firing in the goals from midfield, with Neuville, Berbatov and Kirsten dividing goals between them too. They did experience a blip in the league around winter, but picked up afterwards, and were gone on an unbeaten run from early February to mid-April, which included a five-game winning run. They made statements of intent on the European stage too. They faced Liverpool in the quarter-finals of the Champions League. Leverkusen's future player and manager Sami Hippier would score to give Liverpool a 1-0 victory at Anfield, but two from Balak, one from Berbatov and one from Lucio in the return leg sealed a 4-2 victory and an advance to the semi-finals where they faced Alex Ferguson's Manchester United. Leverkusen had three games to go in the league and only needed four points to seal their first Bundesliga. The loss to Werder Bremen put the champagne on ice, but they turned their attention back to Europe. Leverkusen fought valiantly to draw two all at Old Trafford, taking two away goals into the return leg. Despite this promise, suddenly, while the three jewels in the crown was drifting out of their reach, Leverkusen lost a second successive game, this time to Nuremberg, meaning Dortmund ascended to the top 
and with one game to go, it was now the men in yellow with one hand on the trophy. As they hosted the Red Devils though, there were hopes the mood could be lifted. Leverkusen feared another dream may be shattered when Roy Keane gave Manchester United the lead, but Oliver Neuville, playing through the pain of a broken toe, levelled to restore Leverkusen's away goal advantage. As the game went on, Manchester United improved, and having gained a reputation as a side who would get late winners and the introduction of super sub Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, it was natural Leverkusen would grow nervous. However, the Germans would hold out and upset the odds to reach the Champions League final. The first part of the treble was not to be. Whilst Leverkusen defeated Hertha Berlin on the final day, Borussia Dortmund beat Werder Bremen to seal the title. Bayer would not be champions of Germany, but still had two other honours available and would be the first team in the Champions League final who had never been champions of their country. One week after losing the league, they hoped for redemption in the DFP Pokal final, up against Schalke. Dimitar Berbatov would give Leverkusen the lead, but Schalke hit back in style, netting four times to seal the trophy. And whilst Kirsten would get one back, another of Leverkusen's dreams had died. Tent scenes had seen Topmola sent to the sands as his side imploded. Topmola cut a philosophical mood after the final, saying that losing games like this was just part of football, and the goalkeeper Hans-Jorge Butt said his camp remained optimistic, ahead of the Champions League final. They were positive, knowing that the hurt would be forgiven if they could win the biggest prize in club football. Topmola had referred to the period after knocking out Manchester United as a time for cigarettes and drinking. Now fears were emerging, they had started to celebrate too early. It would all be forgiven though, if they could defeat the mighty Real Madrid at Hampton Park. Raul gave Real Madrid the lead in the 8th minute, but hopes of Leverkusen were redeemed when Lucio headed in an equaliser in the 14th minute. Leverkusen were very much holding their own against the favourites, but suddenly they fell victim to a moment of magic. Shortly before half-time, a ball was played down the left for Roberto Carlos. The Brazilian chased after it and hoisted it in the air towards the edge of the box, where Zinedine Zidane was waiting. The midfielder stood and timed his strike to perfection. He hit it on the volley and it flew into the top corner to put Real Madrid back in front. It has been hailed as one of the game's greatest ever goals. Leverkusen fought in the second half, but a young Iker Casillas, who had come on in the second half of the injured Cesar, showed signs of the legends he would become by making a series of great saves. Sadly, Leverkusen would not break through, and once again, it'd be Los Blancos, who were kings of Europe. By Leverkusen's dream, had died a slow and agonising death. Only three years after Manchester United had sealed an incredible treble, Leverkusen had done the opposite losing all three trophies in dramatic fashion. It would have been a thing of beauty, turning their major trophy count from two to five in one season. With all the talent they had, they came away empty-handed. To rub salt in the wounds, five Leverkusen players were in the Germany side who lost that year's World Cup in the summer. Many great sides have bounced back from moments such as this, but for Leverkusen, the trauma was too great to shake off. The next season, they were in a relegation battle, and towards the end of the campaign, Klaus Topmüller was dismissed, with Renier Clamound saying the players were still in the cinema, dreaming of last season, not realising that the film had ended. Leverkusen have not added to their trophy hall at the time of recording this video, but that may all be about to change. Under a mansion to Xabi Alonso, they have blown the Bundesliga away, seemingly on the verge of breaking a monopoly that has held the league back for too long. The treble is on as it stands, with them also in the semi-finals of the DFP Pokal and quarter-finals of the Europa League. Despite the previous failures, the league seems to be in the bag, and there could be more to follow. After the torture of seeing three dreams die in quick succession, a Basque mastermind may just be making their dreams finally become reality. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video on the AFC Finners channel. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please have a look at the channel down below and check out the hundreds of videos available. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, you can do so in the link below for as little as £1 a month. Please let me know what you thought of this video and what topic you'd like me to cover next. See you next time.